Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Chloe. I'm a now recent graduate of UCLA with a joint bachelor's degree in art history and Egyptology and a master's degree in Egyptology that I completed simultaneously. So today I thought I would talk about how I got into UCLA both for undergrad and for my grad program. So I do not intend this to be braggy, but just to share my stats, what my GPA was, what kind of work experience I had on my resume, what I did to get in. Since I know when I was applying at both as a transfer and to my specific program, there was not a lot of information out there for transfers. So I just hope to provide this as a resource, um, but definitely do not take this as you have to have the same GPA as I did or anything like that. It is definitely possible to get in without those things. So without further ado, let's get going. So I started my community college days at El Camino Community College and I was involved with the El Camino Honors Transfer Program. And at the year I was accepted into UCLA, their acceptance rate in the honors program was 85% to UCLA and that year I think the overall transfer acceptance rate to UCLA was 25%. So part of that really really high acceptance rate is something called TAP, the Transfer Acceptance Priority. So this is something that UCLA and Berkeley offers. You are required to keep a minimum of I believe it's a three five or three six GPA for certain majors. It's a little higher for impacted majors like communications, history, engineering, but you're required to maintain a certain GPA and show that you have completed your IGETC or the general ed course requirements to transfer and all of your pre-major requirements. If you complete all those, there is a form you submit through your school to UCLA or Berkeley, depending on what program you're in. And this is after you submit your normal application. And this will give you priority over other transfer students in the application process, saying the school is basically saying, hey, this student has completed all of these things. They're very qualified to go to your school. So the year I was accepted, the overall TAP acceptance rate was 75% to UCLA and it was 85% at El Camino. So it was a really, really strong statistic and that's a great perk of the honors program. Now, I applied not just to UCLA and Berkeley, but to UC San Diego, or I'm sorry, UC Santa Barbara and UC Irvine. And I tagged to Irvine. So there is a program that community, California Community Colleges have an alliance with the UCs that they have a program called TAC, TAG, the Transfer Acceptance Guarantee. Now that means you choose one school that is any of the UCs except for Berkeley, UCLA, San Diego, and UCSF. Um, those are the only schools that are excluded from the list. But all the rest of them, you can choose one school, and as long as you maintain the minimum GPA uh, for the major. It's different for each school. I think Irvine it was a 3-5. You complete all of your pre-major courses, all of your general education courses, or show that you will be finishing them by the time you transfer. If you complete all those, you submit a form similar to TAP to that school. I tagged to Irvine and you are guaranteed acceptance. Um, you could have terrible uh, personal statements and terrible essays, but if you require, if you fit those requirements, you will be guaranteed acceptance. Now, that doesn't mean you can have poor essays. It is possible for people with 4.0s to not get accepted to these schools. If their essays are really weak, they show they're not a well-rounded student, that they're just focused on their grades and can't show really what they want to get out of their UC experience. So aside from my really high GPA and my involvement in the honors program, I had a part-time job, but I had kind of an unusual college job. 
I used to be a competitive figure skater and since I was 16 I worked at my local skating rink. I was a junior coach so I taught group lessons and helped the skating department run their skating classes but I also worked um, in the summer helping run their summer camps, worked in the office doing administrative tasks and things like this. Which that is a very different work experience than retail or food services so I ha could really draw on that um, experience and also my experiences as a competitive figure skater. I wrote a lot about those in my personal insight questions and the essays on my application. So I think though I didn't have a lot of volunteer experience or involvement on campus, I think I showed that I had something that I was doing along the side that if I wanted to, I could have made a career, but I showed why I wanted to go into academia, get a higher education degree, um, and I think that really helped me stand out that I wasn't only just a good student, but I was also a well-rounded student. So in the end, I got into all four schools I applied to, but ultimately I chose UCLA. And while I was at UCLA, I decided I wanted to go to grad school. And I ended up double majoring in art history and Egyptology. And Egyptology is within the Department of Near Eastern Languages and Cultures. And at the time, NELC, as we call it, had a program called Departmental Scholars. Uh, other majors at UCLA offer this. Um, linguistics is one. It's a very, very small program for exceptional juniors and seniors to complete undergraduate coursework and graduate coursework at once. So, the by, so by the time they graduate, they will have both their bachelor's and their master's degrees. So I knew I wanted to get involved with this program. The nice thing is it doesn't require the GRE and it allows for an expedited graduate school application in a way. Um, and it is a nice transition, especially for transfer. If you want to go to grad school, you have to apply by fall of your second year. So knowing, you know, trying to get that ball rolling is a really fast train. So I knew doing departmental scholars was a good option. It gave me a little bit more time. I was already involved in the department. So that was a really great choice, which if anyone is interested in why I chose certain departments, more of my personal experiences at UCLA as a transfer, more of the personal story rather than how I got in, um, I'd be happy to make another video on that. Just leave a comment below. So for departmental scholars, you were required to have completed a certain number of upper division coursework, maintain a GPA, um, a pretty high GPA, I don't remember exactly what you had to have, and you needed two letters of rec, a statement of purpose, and then a resume. So I, at the time of applying to departmental scholars, had a 385 GPA, I believe, and I already had taken two courses with a professor who I knew I wanted to be my advisor, so I reached out to her for a letter of rec, and then I reached out to another professor at UCLA who I knew could give me a glowing letter of rec, who was familiar with my career interests, and then my academic work as well. And I also was able to show in my statement of purpose that I had already started working on a research project that I wanted to develop in graduate coursework during my time at UCLA with the professor who would become my advisor. So in my statement of purpose, I highlighted that. I highlighted how I wanted this graduate experience and how I knew what my next step after that would be so I could very succinctly show why do I want this program? What will I get out of this program? Why is it important for me to take graduate coursework here at UCLA rather than anywhere else? What is it about the faculty? How have they served me already? And then what am I going to do with this degree? And that has changed, um, but that since graduating and my time of writing that, but at the time I knew what my career goals were. And so I had very 
a very clear vision of what I wanted to do with that. So I had that going for me. And then my resume, I think, showed that I was a well-rounded student. And in a way, I was starting a research project, as I mentioned, that I knew where I wanted to head with that. I had, and I had some very diverse work experience from teaching, um, working at the rink, and then I worked on at two different jobs on campus, um, one at the Graduate School of Education and then at the Hammer Museum as a student educator. And I discussed how that role um, led me, my role as a student educator and giving tours and wanting to get involved in higher education, how that led me to pursuing my master's degree. So that's a little bit of my statistics of how I got into each program. Um, I am very happy to make another video, clarify any questions that you may have. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope that this may be helpful for anybody who is transferring or figuring out what they want to do. Um, so I hope this was helpful. Please let me know in the comments if you have any questions or any other video ideas for the future. And if not, I'll see you all later. Bye.